Welcome to the opening ceremony of the academic year 2013-2014. Um, I think most of the students um, have passed directly to the aperitif uh, without doing the coming by here. They don't know what they're missing. So anyway, um, our decana has decided to dedicate or to organize this opening ceremony around the master students, and this for a set of reasons. The first reason is that given that you're here to do master studies, the assumption that you're actually interested in what you're going to do over the next two years is somewhat higher than it is when you start your bachelor's degree, which makes life a lot easier for the professors. Secondly, um, we also assume that you're interested in what you're doing, which makes you interesting students for the professors. And finally, uh, most of the PhD students, um, who are people that we will then be working together with for several years, will come from the cohort of our master's students. So I think if you look at these reasons, they are pretty clear and they tend to show that our professors are really interested in you and hope that they can develop not just a working but also a personal relationship with you. And to sort of help with this process, um, at the end of the ceremony, there will be stands outside, one stand for each master's program, and a few professors will be there, and you can try to talk to the professors and the assistants, or do whatever you want. Um, I am unfortunately the dean of a management school, and as the dean of a management school, I, of course, have to do some advertising. And so advertising consists of me telling you what uh, lucky people and what fortunate people you are to have made the choice to come to study at HSC Lausanne. The true reason is, of course, that you will actually feel quite at home here with your colleagues and with the professors. But things, seeing that these things cannot be quantified, um, I have to show you a number of these slides where things are being quantified. And for me, the most attractive one is the last one. You know, it's a sort of five-star hotel you came to. That's already a good idea. And among the five-star hotels, you had one of the top five-star hotels. Um, this being said, um, let me also, on a more personal note, try to explain to you what my subjective definition of a good university is. So I think ability among any subset of groups, including the subset of university professors, has a strongly not normal distribution. And the people who make these slides are not really able to show you the, draw the full extent of the problem I see it. In my view, it's a curve that goes up very steeply, very fast, and then comes down, and then has a very long tail end. There is a very small fraction of extremely competent people on this world. And my definition of a good university is not a university where you have to have these people who are so incredibly good. I think a good university is a university where almost all the staff is way to the right of the median or the average university professor. And I think, in spite of the fact that most students have a natural tendency to complain, if you look at things objectively, and if you compare to what you will see in most other places, you will realize that this is actually what you have here. You have a highly qualified, dedicated group of professors who are really good. And so that is why I think you will get a good education here. Um, I think that our faculty is probably the faculty with the most international set of master students. And so I think for the current year, it's around one third of foreign students. And we use a very narrow definition of foreign students. The so French student who has got his bachelor degree from HSC Lausanne is not counted as a foreigner, which for the French students is already a reason to have come for the bachelor. You are now counted as one of us. And the people from the German-speaking part of Switzerland are also not counted as foreigners. So it's really only with people who have a bachelor degree from outside of Switzerland who we count as foreign students. I guess it, I would guess that in terms, if you look at the passport of the people you're going to study with, it's going to be at least 50% of people who have a non-Swiss passport. And I think that is really one of the great strengths of our faculty, that you have the chance here to meet people from very different horizons. And 
I think that you should be aware of the fact that being here, part of it is because you should try to understand and learn um, the course material. But a really major part is the fact that you will be able to get to know and to build a network of people who are above average intelligent, above average interesting, and if you're lucky, you will run into them uh, quite often again in the rest of your lives. So try not to forget this relationship, relationship component of your studies. Um, I told you in the beginning that the failure rate um, and our master's degrees is actually quite low. I think at a very simple level, this is a reasonable statistic that for once um, seems to, tends to illustrate what I say quite well, the failure rate last year was roughly about 10%, and there may be many reasons why people fail. As good students, you realize, of course, that failure is not exogenous, but endogenous. And so this failure rate was presumably low because reasonably early in their studies, the students understood that if they don't work hard, they fail. So don't interpret this number as being an indication that you just have to come here, twiddle your thumbs, and a piece of paper will fall into your hand. Interpret it as an indication that if you apply the necessary effort, you will succeed and you will have a good time here. I must also have a word of warning to the foreigners. These are aggregate numbers. If you disaggregate these numbers between the students with a non-Swiss background and the students with a Swiss background, the failure rate among the people with a non-Swiss background is about four times higher than the students with a Swiss background. Um, this does not mean that the non-Swiss students are on average worse than the Swiss students. I think one can actually make a case that on average they're better. Because if you look at the numbers of the PhD students, um, or 50 percent of our PhD students, PhD students are actually foreigners for a variety of reasons. So what this tends to indicate is that the selection processes or the education standards in the, among the non-Swiss students are not as standardized as, we, as they are for the Swiss students. And that is why those of you who come from backgrounds where you realize uh, that it is not doesn't have the same quality or the same orientation or the same de degree of technicity or whatever as what we expect from our students, you will just have to try a bit harder. And I have been told and I have learned from personal experience that almost always understanding is very hard to get without putting in a certain amount of suffering. And so this is also what will happen to you. In order not to end on this very negative note, um, please note that those of you who are foreigners and those of you who are not foreigners have an additional chance to spend at least half a year and sometimes even a year abroad in the course of your master's programs here. Um, so it is really a possibility to get to see the world and get to see people from very many different horizons. So I hope you will enjoy it. I will now pass the word to my vice dean and ski colleague, Marius Brühlhardt, who will tell you about our master's programs and who claims to have some useful information for you. I will watch this with great interest.